Okay, let's go back. Um, before five phases, we actually have yin yang, way before, in fact. So we're talking about, you know, academically 3,000 years ago, more like 5,000 years ago, probably, right? You can see that yin yang is about actually understanding and observing uh, the cosmos, where it comes from. So, you know, at the moment we have this diagram. Now, this is a fundamental symbol. And remember, yin yang and the five elements are not Chinese medicine. They are Taoism to understand the philosophy of the cosmos. And Chinese medicine is one of the branches that uses this, or actually all branches use this, but this is the understanding of the cosmos first, philosophy. The assumption was that we're a small part of the larger. You know, 5,000 years ago, if we have this assumption, we just observe the larger and try to create symbols and understanding of the cosmos. Um, that first starts an understanding that is called the only constant in the universe is change. Everything is always changing. Once they have that, they get to a point where they realize that the most important cycle that they can measure is the annual cycle, right? So every day they put up, actually they have what we call an eight foot gnome, it's a stick, right? And it has a, a line at the top of it. And every day at midday, when it's midday, the sun will point direct south, we measure the distance of that shadow, right? And every 15 days in those 24 periods, they measure that shadow. Like it was just the shortest for summer solstice, now it's getting longer and longer to summer, yeah? And then they break up the year into that 24 periods on a pie chart like this, and they say, this is the long shadow, then as we move, it gets shorter, and it gets shorter, and it gets shorter, and it gets shorter and shorter, and then it gets longer, 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 and then you make this. And then you say, this is summer light, this is winter dark. And now we have a symbol Remember, don't trust people, only trust the cosmos. First of all, we use measurement, yeah? And we, now we have an idea that, and this is actually mathematics. This angle here is the angle of uh, the axis of the Earth. And the shape of this sine curve is relative to your latitude, in fact. And so we have this symbol, and then we realize that actually all change is very predictable in the sense that you have summer solstice, winter solstice, summer, yeah, you have midday, midnight, midday, yeah, you have full moon, new moon. So all of these cycles, think about the rising yang energy. This represents winter solstice, this represents summer solstice, right? But then we can think about the day as it rises, the sun is now here and at midday it'll be full and the seed of its opposite is born and it goes down to midnight and the seed of its opposite is born and it's consistently moving. And we divide the whole world into like this kind of idea, heaven and earth, the sun this symbolizes and the moon. We call the sun the Tai Yang, the great Yang. Yeah? And we used to call the moon the Tai Yin, the great Yin. Right? We talk about the day and the night, the summer and the winter. We start to have duality. That's the first level of philosophical understanding. And eventually, after hundreds, this one, thousands of years actually doing that, they said, now we're going to go to the next step and develop not just summer and winter, but this rising energy here and falling energy here are different. And then there's the earth in the middle. And can you see now we have the five elements. Can you see how the city was laid out? Can you see, if you look at the five holy mountains of China on a map, there's the center mountain, yeah, there's the east mountain, the west mountain, the north mountain, the south mountain. Think about a courtyard house. You enter in the south, there's a central courtyard. These rooms have different energy. They're just microcosms of the macrocosm, like we are in this sense. So this is basic philosophy, yin yang, and then five elements, and then that doesn't really change. It's only the applications of that change that develop, and the methodology that then we use this information then to gain further insight. We say everything is yin yang. Um, you know, for example, the human body, we call qi and blood. Qi is more yang. The energy or the life force we can't see or touch or measure is more yang. And the blood is more feminine, yin. Yeah, we can see it, we can measure it, we can touch it, it's beautiful, it nourishes the cells. The yang aspect is just dynamic transformation and metabolism. Qi without substance is kind of useless. Substance without movement is kind of useless. They're interdependent, interpromoting, interrelated structures. We call them the complementary opposites of yin yang. Right? Just as you cannot have day without night, you cannot have summer without winter, yeah? You cannot have the masculine energy without the feminine energy, and it goes on and on like this. Make sense? 
As long as you know yin yang is the foundation and we use that, but once we go to five elements, we don't really use yin yang too much. So it's kind of like a higher level of learning than yin yang. But yin yang is still useful to explain the base concepts. So depending, remember none of this language is real. Language is just signposts to reality to allow you to go deeper and internalize the key learnings and understanding and how to apply those theories in the human realm. Just like Chinese medicine in fact. The theory and the methodology is what's most powerful. Let's have a look. Um, here, just to introduce you to the five elements. Now if we're going to design this area of the park, think energetically, this is the water, the blue. The green is the wood, the red is the fire, the yellow, it's actually white, is the, me is the metal, and the yellow is the earth. Now, what in the design principles in Feng Shui, we put a waterfall in the water area, and we put a creek that connects with the fire. The water and fire must be connected. Yeah. In the in wood area, represent, you can think of this as like winter, spring, summer, autumn, and the central earth energy. Yeah. In the spring energy, it's rising, coming up, so we plant a herbal garden. Yeah. In the fire area, in the metal and the earth, we put shapes and we put colors related to that energetic quality. Yeah. Water, you can see in brackets, is related to kidney, the organ. Wood is the liver. Yeah, remember I was saying that we are a microcosm of the macrocosm. Just like in Chinese medicine, you have heat or you have damp or you have cold or you have dryness or you have wind. Just like today is dry and hot. In your body, you could be dry and hot. You could be damp and cold. Because we're seen as a reflection of the cosmos. We use the same labels for imbalance for the body. And the body is seen as a microsystem of this astronomical. We're from Earth. In the center, we have the spleen stomach. Yeah, in the winter, we have the kidney, the winter solstice. The spring and liver is the rising energy. The summer is the heart, yeah. And the autumn is the lung. And we're made in an image of that. Yeah, and these just resonate. When we're talking about these images, what is, what is the purpose of doing all that? The purpose is that when someone comes into this area of the park and knows nothing about that, they feel, wow, this is really harmonious. They don't know why, but because it's designed in an image of the cosmos. Now remember, this is microcosm, macrocosm theory. The park is a microcosm of the cosmos. We are a microcosm of the cosmos. I could take that water and break again five areas. It's a microcosm of, like my foot, foot massage, he doesn't sleep well. His kidney's not strong. Your foot is a microcosm of you. Or your ear is like a fetus in the womb, yeah? This is the, the head, the spine, the internal organs. Or each cell in our body contains the whole information to the whole structure of the DNA. It's a holographic system. Now that is a, a scientific theory, but in Chinese, philosophy and Chinese medicine, that is a core assumption of reality that the whole science is built on. Very different, yeah, and we, then we prove it through relational ideas. Very subjective in that sense. The thing I want you to get out of this is that wood is not just wood. As an ex-engineer, I think wood, I know what wood is. I'd rather call it spring. It's an energetic quality that we have to call something. So we call it or label it something that every human is familiar with. Wood, water, fire, right? But wood represents the color green, the season of spring, the direction of east, the opening of the eye, the time from 1 to 3 a.m., the emotion of anger, the, the flavor of sour. This is sour, this is salty, this is sweet, this is acrid, this is bitter. We break the world into energetic qualities based on the labels of astronomy, winter, summer, spring, and autumn. It's complicated, but once we have that idea, this represents that energy. I don't know how, um, this is just an appreciation for most of you at this stage, for yin yang and the five elements, but like as a practitioner of Chinese medicine, I n must know these relationships. For example, say someone comes in and they have um, sleeping problems. And I say, Tommy, you know, uh, you can't fall asleep? He says, no, I fall asleep fine. The problem is that I wake up at three o'clock every night for one hour. And I know as a Chinese medicine practitioner who studied Chinese medicine philosophy, that one to three a.m. is the liver time. So then I start asking questions, is it liver chi stagnation? Is it liver blood deficiency? Is it liver yin deficiency? And then I, and then I have a, a way to understand 
Well, if it's this, then I use this kind of body work here, I use this kind of acupuncture, I use this type of herbs, I give this type of lifestyle advice, and it works. It's very complex, actually. And then over time, if that's working, that assumption must be correct. So we record and keep information based on this experience. So as long as you have an appreciation that these are not elements, we call them, that's why we like to call them five phases. In Chinese, the wu xiong, the five walks or transformations. They're movements that are constantly changing and they just are representative energies. 